you all doing tonight? My name is Big Bob the Boy, and welcome to 10 amazing tier 4 items in the Burning Crusade. That's right, another top 10 because, come on, we can't be on beta 24-7. So there are a lot of great items in tier 4 raids, more than 10 for sure. Tier 4 being Gruul, Kara, and Magtheridon. But I wanted to look at 10 really good ones here, items that are very unique. A big power spike over previous items, or items that will last you until long after you've curb stomped Melkazar and Gruul for the 50th time. Definitely more than 10 items out there that fit. So tell me which ones I missed in the comments. I know people were going to anyways. Number 1. Ritzen's Lost Pendant It's lost because some trash mobs stole it. This is a trash drop in Kara, although pretty low drop rate from my memory. Really really great for shadow priests and locks. Speaking of shadow priests, they only use one spell that can crit, Mind Blast. Don't get any crit buffing talents, and get a lot of hit from talents. And unless they are PMR Night Elf for Star Shards, only use shadow spells. So shadow damage is their best stat by far, and 51 from a necklace is a lot. It's gonna be biz for quite a long time. Interestingly, Ritzen also has a wand and a ring, but those aren't lost. He left them in Stratholm and on Kirage. Number 2, Romulo's Poison Vial. Now this is just one of many interesting trinkets. Dropping from Romeo and Juliet event in Karazan, this thing started TBC pretty terribly. I had one on my Inhand Shaman, but it saw some buffs over time that made it into a fairly sought after trinket. 35 hit from a trinket is the highest there is on a trinket. Nice. It was also pretty common back in the day for tanks to want this or a threat trinket. Number 3. Oh yeah, shit is getting good now. Legacy. 40 agility. If you didn't know, 40 agility is a lot of agility and this is a two-hander. Melee weaving in TBC is in a different place than it was in Classic, but it's still around and will always have a place. My heart. If you're going to weave, this is the best option outside of blacksmithing uh, until tier 5. With Twin Blade of the Phoenix dropping from Kael'thas, that's going to be pretty hard to get though. This is also a great option even when not melee weaving for survival hunters since it's not particularly easy to find two one-handers with lots of agility. And 80 attack power and 40 stamp. Number 4, Eye of Magtheridon. 54 spell power but more importantly grants 170 spell power for 10 seconds when one of your spells is resisted. This is a weird one. Weird trinkets almost always have some amazing use, and I think this is no exception. I want to share a few I've seen people throw out. Duels vs Rogues. He's going to be clossed at some point, may as well take advantage of that and get some extra spell power if you can sacrifice the trinket slot. Prote Paladins as a threat trinket, and similarly just AoE in general. I found a lot of old comments where people said this really shined in high jaw, where there's waves of zombies all over the shop and you're AOEing them down. Even if your chance to resist is low, it only takes one mob to resist one tick of blizzard to proc this for 10 seconds. And a really really interesting one I heard was arcane mages. Yeah so I never rated as an arcane mage or anything but apparently because of arcane focus, all other spell schools for arcane mages have a good chance to be resisted. And there's some downtime in between arcane blasts where you throw out scorch or some shit, and that would have a pretty high chance of getting resisted. One thing that would make this OP as shit is if it worked on partial resists, but sadly, everything I could find showed it did not proc on partial resists. Your spells need to be fully resisted, but still, pretty damn cool trinket. Number 5, we're going back to Karazhan boys for one of my favorite bosses and drops, Spite Blade, coming from Nether Spite. So sword rogues get a little dicked in early TBC, most melee just want a blacksmithing weapon. The sword is usable, but you'd probably offhand that even if you did want it. There aren't any heroic dungeon drop swords for rogues either. 
So that leaves us with two options. Blink Strike, which will probably cost 68,780 gold or thereabouts, and Vindicator's Russell Brand, which is not bad and just requires Aldor Exalted, so you will see some rogues go Aldor for this. Spite Blade, of course, is better than all of those. Looks great, unless you PvP for Gladiator's weapons, which, well, okay, you should do that, but if you don't, it won't be replaced for quite a while. Number six. <sighs> okay. Alright, this is enough. I've fucking had it. Okay? I can't even use Wowhead anymore. I can't do it. The ads are out of control. Out of control. I'm just here to read tooltips. I can suffer through some ads for that. I can do it. But no. They have ads all over the goddamn page. I click on a link, and it doesn't take me to the link. It takes me to an ad, because there's some hidden ad or some shit on top of everything that won't go away until you click on the ad. Very classy, Wowhead. And then, when I finally do get to the page, I have some window pop up with Wowhead Weekly or some shit, and all I see is some girl in her pajamas with a cat crawling all over her. I don't care! What is this place? Who are these people? It's like a bad acid trip in here. You know what? I'm going back to endless.gg. I'm going to go back to the glory hole. I feel like that's something I could wrap my head around. Number six, the lightning capacitor coming from that bitch ill hoof in Karzan. Another super fun trinket here, throwing out lightning bolts for a good chunk of damage after scoring three crits. Elishams crit a lot, so this is good for them, but wait, don't mages crit a lot too? Yeah, I guess they do, but this is really good for Ellie's because a lot of their lightning bolt improving talents also apply to the lightning bolt of this trinket. But so do a lot of other talents and debuffs like, say, Misery. Also, the tooltip for this is apparently wrong. Very wrong. It's 2.5 seconds between actual lightning bolts being fired, not the charges. Unless, well, Wiki is wrong, which I've come to learn is a 50-50 thing. And... I actually have heard this is really good for mages too, specifically arcane, but I couldn't find a lot of info on that. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of that. Absolutely another really cool trinket here. Number 7, Ribbon of Sacrifice, another cool trinket. Okay, last trinket, I promise. Wait, no, no, never mind. This is another Kara trinket, this time coming from the Big Bad Wolf event. 73 passive healing on a trinket is already nice, but the on use is even better. Every time you heal a target, they get... Fecundity. Which increases the healing they receive by 30. This means once they get the buff, any time a heal is cast on that target from any source, they gain the plus healing, and it's pretty generous. Not only is it 150 healing at max, but it works with Chain Heal and Circle of Healing. So you can have it on multiple targets. That's pretty crazy and I confirmed that from multiple sources. Not a bad trinket for any healer but I'm really feeling that raid healing situation with Chiel and COH. Definitely gotta pick one of these up on my priest. Number 8 Aldori Legacy Defender drops from the Black Dragon Killer himself, Gruul. While Shield of Impenetrable Darkness is good and also looks really nice. Aldori Legacy Defender is an excellent shield in tier 4. Aesthetically, it just fits Draenei and TBC so well. And stats wise, it's pretty damn nice. Hit, def, stam, and even a socket. But what really elevates it high enough for this list is that you're going to use this for a long time. Because there are no tank shields in tier 5. Someone at Blizz got drunk and forgot about shields for a while, I guess. It's even weirder when you think pre raid to tier 4 has a really nice progression of shields. There's a decent bad shield, then impenetrable darkness from Kara, a 10 man, and then Aldori from Gruul, a 25 man. It makes sense. Of course, even when you get into tier 5, you won't upgrade it right away. Kaz Rogal drops a nice one, but the one you really want is from Illidan, the sweet, oh so sweet, Bulwark of Azanoth. But until then, Aldori Legacy Defender is nice. 
Number 9. Moro's Lucky Pocket Watch Drops from... Moro's. Also in Karazhan. Last trinket I promised for real this time. From my understanding, this is a great tank druid trinket. But I've never been that into feral, so I wanted to double check on that. And, okay, guys, alright. Okay. It's been a while since a video has gone off the rails because I try very hard to keep my videos firmly on the rails. But I just can't help it, okay? While searching for info on Druid Tanks and Moro's Lucky Pocket Watch, I find this. What is this? Did someone novelize their WoW experience? There's like 2,000 chapters. What is going on with society? I, I don't just... I was very hesitant, but I did sign into this website because I had to see more. But it's behind a paywall. In 2021, even fictional novels about fictional characters in WoW have microtransactions. And I can't pay for this. I'm not liquid. I'm not liquid, John. So I had a hard time finding info on druid tanking, but I saw this recommended in several places for feral tanks. Since while there are stam trinkets out there, a lot of other tank trinkets are focused on block or death rating, whereas druid would generally get more of straight dodge rating, and they don't block anyway. And the only other dodge focused trinket comes with Magister's Terrace. So this is a very solid avoidance trinket for druid tanks, I think. <sighs> All right, you know what it is. Number 10, the Guild Shatterer, AKA Suckin' D for DKP, AKA It's My Biss, AKA Dragon Spine Trophy. Oh shit, another trinket. Dropping from Gruel the Dragon Slayer, DST is an excellent trinket for really any physical DPS. Early on in TBC, it was phenomenal. But it was nerfed, and melee haste was also nerfed on top of that. And it is still amazing. There's always an argument over who this should go to. And which class benefits the most. I mean, it's hunters, but who should get priority on this? In my... Alcohol-soaked mind, because this is good for so many people, the player is the most important factor to consider. Is this someone that's been in the guild forever and shows up on time to every raid? Or is this some new recruit rogue that's going to leave the second they get it? But I still wanted to know what class gets the most benefit from this insane haste proc. And there's a 20 page thread on the EJ forums focused on just that exact topic. I read all 20 pages. It was amazing. People apologizing to each other on the internet when they were wrong. What happened to the world? But the actual content of the thread about DST was, well, shit. It ended with people saying feral druids should get it because it was a good threat trinket. So that was a waste of three hours. But I did look elsewhere and here's what I can say. People thought back in 2008 about a few classes. For enhance, DST was third best. Blackened Naru, Sliver, and Shard of Contempt beat it. For Combat Rogue, it's really, really good. But it depends on your other gear, with other trinkets beating it out if you had too much haste on your other gear, I think. For Hunter, it's never replaced. The only info I could find for Rhett and War was dubious, but it said Rhett and Arms was about the same as Enhance, with it actually never being replaced for Fury. So, in summation, what does all of this mean and who gets it? I have no fucking idea. It's a great trinket, but I'm done talking about it. Super secret number 11, Wolf Slayer Sniper Rival. Lube up, cause we're about to dive deep into the dark and wet place known as Hunter Theory Crafting. WSSR drops from the Little Red Riding Hood of Anankara, and for a very long time was the best hunter weapon in the game because of its speed. Hunter rotation in TBC had somewhat tight timings, 
and 2.7 was thought to be the perfect speed for the, at the time, best hunter rotation. One steady shot and one auto shot, or sometimes called one to one. 2.6 was thought to be too fast, and anything slower than WSSR was too slow. Until patch 2.3, where it was discovered that steady shot interacted with the global cooldown in a weird way that let you fire off more shots than you should have otherwise been able to, which now means slower weapons can be better. But that's not possible on TVC beta right now. In fact, no one knows what the best hunter rotation in TBC Classic is just yet. It's still being worked on by top men. Top men. But there is a chance, wow history repeats itself, and WSSR is the best hunter weapon in the game for virtually all of TBC, meaning hunters would definitely deserve DST the most. If you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button, bell, like button, share button, all that other shit. I appreciate each and every one I get. And we even have memberships now. You can check them out by clicking the join button right by the sub button. It is absolutely the best way to support the channel and you'll get some really cool emotes. Plus it's way better and cheaper than a Twitch sub. We've gotten a lot of new members here lately. Massive thanks to those big bombed wonderful people. I've got a lot of WoW content already on the channel and have much, much more coming, including streaming right here on YouTube, so be sure to stick around for that. If there's any specific WoW Classic or TBC Classic content you'd like to see, be sure to let me know in the comments. But that is going to be all for this one. I really appreciate you all watching and I will see you all for the next one. Just to top things off because it annoys me to no end. That ad for Wowheads Wow Weekly or whatever it's called shows 8.3 million views and 63,000 likes. All right, I'm a little drunk. Hold on. But if you click on it and go watch the video on YouTube, it's 4,200 views and 75 likes. <laughs>